My name is Elizabeth Daniel, and every Friday I stage a vignette full of vintage items to sell on my Facebook group, Elizabeth Daniel Decor. Throughout my adventures through thrift stores and estate sales, I've learned a lot about the value that these found and sentimental items have with the people who use them to curate their lives. With this video project, I hope to share some of these stories with you. I met Chris on a bright spring day in 2018. She hopped out of a work truck wearing big, thick framed glasses, bright red enamel earrings, and a giant smile. John wasn't far along behind. They'd come to scope out a set of yellow vintage chairs I was selling, and we hit it off immediately. Turns out Chris and I share the hometown of Meriden, Kansas. They run a successful resale business in Topeka called Warehouse 414. It's in a large industrial building that's filled to the brim with some of the most luxurious furniture ever made. People buy pieces as collectors mm -hmm. and they buy pieces as they just want to decorate their home. We both had been do, done this all of our lives before we met each other. We were, and we grew we up were, aware of furniture. We were scroungers and, and, yeah, and loving and design and, and everything. As kids, even. Yeah. yeah. That kind of stuff. So, um, it just happened. so when we got married to try and one of the things that we started, when we started our own personal collection, we actually kind of started out with Art Deco. Thing. But then when we started our business in 1989, I started looking at the mid-century modern stuff and saying, hmm, this stuff is awesome. I never stick to any specific style or era when I'm setting up a picture. Chris seems to have a similar approach. She doesn't marry herself to any aesthetic. She just likes what she likes and she buys accordingly. Well, I'm out looking for pieces. I don't always know what that piece is. Mm -hmm. I just know I like its lines. I like the way it looks. Something and some, there's something about that, out to you. that that just... If you could give advice to somebody who maybe wasn't like looking to resell, but just somebody who was looking to decorate their home, mm -hmm. like what would you say to that person about how to pick things out at a thrift store? Oh, follow your gut. Okay. If it call if if it if you're attracted to it, you should have it. Yeah. And it usually is I, I used to tell my design clients that they can have grandma's rocking chair over here and somebody no, and, a, fits nothing in there. and another piece of something over here. Those two pieces already have something in common by them loving them. Mm -hmm. So they'll you, work here. Chris brings loads of passion for unique pieces with rich histories. John's more pragmatic approach complements her. He looks everything over carefully and efficiently, noting anything that may need to be repaired, and then assesses how to do it. It's an art, really. I, obviously, I don't have a, an overseer. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> uh, pretty, much, uh, pretty much I know what questions to ask and what not, and what to go ahead with. And if I go ahead, sometimes it isn't right. So. She's, After she's ultimately the 35 years of business to build. Yeah. yeah. I still haven't learned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I look at a piece and I think, oh man, that's perfect. We're gonna get that. And I think oh, all it needs is all it needs is clean all it needs is cleaned up and it'll be ready to photograph. And he'll say, Dear, what do you mean all it needs is cleaned up? That's that's a water ring. I can't get that out with just cleaning it up. And you won't want that when we get ready to build. Mm -hmm. Photograph and I've got to get that water ring out of there. And what about that missing veneer? I, I look at it them. It looked with, perfect when we saw it first. Yeah. I look at them with rose colored glasses, uh -huh. and then by the time it's just all trash. By the time he Not gets them, by the time he gets them, he's got a lot more work to do. Working together, they seem to know exactly what to look for. Maybe it's the recipe for their success. We try and make every piece just as perfect as we can, so it doesn't backfire on somebody who gets right. it. Yeah. The run-of-the-mill furniture now versus the run-of-the-mill furniture in the 50s and 60s actually probably pretty comparable. If you if you buy top-of-the-line pieces now, mm -hmm. you're gonna they're still around. Pay, pay, pay more. They're they're out there, mm -hmm. and the top-of-the-line stuff from the 50s. But as a, a general rule, 
yeah, stuff doesn't last as long. The new stuff doesn't last as long as... Right. Ultimately, Chris doesn't ever let the condition of a piece dictate whether or not to save it. She can see right through the dust, the peeling paint, or the perceived imperfections. I can have a piece of glass that's signed Barb on the bottom right next to my Vanini vase. I don't care mm -hmm. who did that if it pleases me right. to look at it. Okay. Look at the cabinet over there. How oh. many people would leave that that way? But you can't get that, right? You can't, can't say it. that. You can't. Everybody doesn't want that. But yeah, and not everybody does, but I love the way them. that looks. Um, if something happens, I'll just cherish the mm -hmm. the, the mar or the whatever mm -hmm. is in that. What my mom always said is, <laughs> that's the memory. Uh -huh. that's, yes. the, that's, that's, that's the memory, memory that you talk about. And there's a, there's a poem by Edgar A. Guest called the home home is and and one of the lines is you'd leave the the uh handprints on the doors if mm -hmm. you could but it takes a heap of living in a house to make it home yeah and that that you'd save those even save those handprints on the doors if you could chris exudes a confidence in her decor choices that could easily just be attributed to years in the business but i don't think that's all it is I think she has mindfully spent time figuring out what things she really loves and then surrounds herself with them. It's a beautiful way to live.